All right, everybody, welcome to our monthly Level Up Leadership Summit. Um, just so you know, these online events are designed to help you get to know the leaders here at Experian and also gain insight into the leadership skills needed to grow your career. Before we get started, Patty is here to share a little bit about Claudette. Today we're excited to chat with Claudette Christensen. Claudette joined Experian in May 2010 and served in various leadership roles, including growth initiatives for Partner Solutions, Data Breach, and our direct-to-consumer business. Claudette has over 20 years of sales, marketing, product management, and operations experience across a variety of industries and functions. She currently serves as the Vice President of Product Management for our Credit Services Division and is responsible for the credit life cycle of a consumer through B2B and B2C solutions. Claudette will be transferring to a Chief Operating Officer position this coming year. Claudette, thanks for being our guest today. Thank you, Patty. So we're gonna go right into this Q&A. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Absolutely, uh, so a little bit about me. I uh, went to college here in California and achieved a communications degree with an emphasis in marketing. I was fortunate enough to do an internship um, while I was in my senior year in college at an advertising agency here in Costa Mesa. And I became a media buyer for Foot Cone and Belding. We were buying airtime for Mazda commercials. Uh, so I did that for a bit of time, and then I went into the software side of the business. And oh. before you knew it, I was uh, moving up to the Bay Area and stepped my toe into the financial services space. I worked um, at eLoan, which was an online mortgage, home equity, auto, and deposits company, and then uh, moved back down to Southern California into a mortgage role, and before you knew it, I was at Experian working on the direct-to-consumer business. So I spent some time um, launching Protect My ID with Jen Lohr and a couple others, and actually left the company for about 14 months. I was called by the former CEO of eLoan to help him launch Prosper Marketplace which is a peer-to-peer -peer lending company. And he had asked me to help get his business off the ground. It was definitely startup, uh, definitely highs wow. and lows. <laughs> and uh, I kept in touch with everyone at Experian. So that, that's one lesson, keep, keep your network wow. tight. And uh, I was offered a job to come back. So um, came back into the role that I had left almost, um, but with re expanded responsibilities. What, what was that like, Claudette? Um, coming back to Experian, you obviously left a good mark because Experian is like, we need Claudette back. Mm -hmm. So that, um, so that it was really good on your part. Um, you've always been a high performer, but what was it like coming back to Experian after the 14 months? You know what? It was it was great coming back um, for a couple different reasons. Um, obviously, I, I knew the team. I, I knew Jen Lohr very well. Um, I, I came back into a very similar role. Uh, Jen had grown the identity business to also take over data breach. So I had an opportunity to work with other leaders within the organization and learn a new business. Um, so it was it was great. Uh, I came back to welcoming arms, and um, again started off in in a similar similar role that I left, but with more responsibility. Um, so it was it was great. And and I'll tell you, I there's there's more than there's more than just me that actually is a repeat uh, Experian employee. So uh, it is possible to come back. And um, again, first lesson: make sure you keep your network tight and don't burn any bridges. That's awesome. Yeah, um, that's a really good piece of advice, so keep your network tight. You were away for a good amount of time, 14 months. Do you have any more advice on how to actually keep your network tight? Sure. Um, so I, Jen and I actually would have lunch on a quarterly basis. Um, I would continue to stay in touch with um, the people on my previous team um, over lunch or emails or text. Um, I think it's so important to, to network not only um, internally within the company, but also externally. And I actually set goals for myself on a, a monthly basis where I try to touch base with 
for uh, two internal, two external um, people on a monthly basis to make sure that I keep my network fresh um, and mm. relevant and I expand it. Wow, I love the fact that you set goals. Yeah. Like that. Because, like, think about you're talking about we were talking about goals earlier um, and setting business goals. But I love that part of your the way that you work is that you set up like personal leadership goals, um, keeping your network tight, and how are you growing your network? Because obviously those relationships can turn into business opportunities. That's so true. And I think um, what I, I used to have six a month, which became a little extensive oh. for me. But uh, so I, I, figured <laughs> four. I figured one one a week is pretty good. Um, but as I mentioned, I think it's important not only to network within Experian, um, but network with your clients, network with uh, former employees of Experian, uh, network through LinkedIn, um, because you never know when you are looking for some intel on marketing research or you might be having um, an opportunity to recruit um, and you want to tap into your network to bring in that bench strength talent so it's um, it's great it's great to network both internally and externally I'm kind of curious um, as you were growing your career early on did you seek out any mentors I did. I, I did. Um, I was fortunate um, to have um, some informal mentors here at Experian, and I took the initiative um, to ask um, that individual to be my mentor. And then I was also fortunate enough to be part of some of Experian's development programs, such as the Experian Business Network. Um, and so I had more of a formal mentor in, in that regard. Um, but I would say every year um, I typically seek out a, a mentor, whether informally or formally. And I like to branch out and look for a different mentor every year because I'm always le learning something else. And I might be at mm -hmm. a certain stage in my career where I need um, a little different fine tuning in certain areas. Um, and so I seek those people that can help me um, improve not only personally, but also professionally. That's really good, Claudette. So obviously that takes a big sense, you know, self-awareness is huge there because you're realizing what are some skills that I might be lacking I need help with. Where did you, like, where do you go to, I guess, evaluate yourself to, to know what skills you need to work on? Because sometimes, we don't know what we need help with until someone tells us. I think um, one thing that I learned early on in my career is asking for feedback. And sometimes receiving feedback can be pretty tough. Um, it can bruise your ego. Um, but feedback is a gift. And, um, and sometimes the feedback that you get might not be from the right person. So make sure that you validate that feedback with others. Um, but that, that's what I learned early on is, is really gaining feedback. Um, as an example, um, you could be having a, a meeting, and after that meeting, you can talk to a couple people around the table and say, how do you think that went? What could we do better in that meeting? What could have I done better in that meeting? Um, and that could be a client meeting. That could be an internal meeting. Um, but asking for feedback is key. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I guess to your point about sometimes that feedback like hurts the ego because you might think you're doing well or maybe that meeting went well, but then someone brings up a point that maybe you weren't expecting. Mm hmm Yes, it, 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 it can be tough. And then you, you want to drill down on them with them a little bit more, you know, asking them for specific situations on, on where they saw um, that behavior. Um, and then, you know, ask them, you know, how do you, how do you think I can improve in that area? Um, I think that's also important because if they're, if they're pointing it out to you, they probably have some advice on how to improve in that area. I'm kind of curious, Claudette, about uh, your early on as you were um, growing your career, um, improving your own leadership skills, and seeking out different mentors, what were some, maybe some skills that you wanted to work on early, early on? Sure, uh, great question, Mike. For me, I, I really kind of hone it in on, on five areas. Um, communication was key. 
um, and having that ability to communicate effectively, um, not only as a leader, but as with my peers as well. Um, the other area was relationship building. Um, it's, it's always comfortable to build relationships with people that have similar interests in you or maybe are in similar, similar roles than you, but to really get out of that comfort zone and build relationships with, with people that you might not normally go have coffee with. Um, so, so that was really key for me. Um, the third area was, was really kind of focusing on integrity. Um, and as a leader, just really setting those strong set of values and standing by them. And I would say even articulating them to your team and to your peers so that they know who you are as a leader. Um, and then the fourth one is, and, and you'll hear this um, you know, from any executive leader, is the ability to be decisive. Um, there's many times where you have to make decisions, uh, you have to make quick decisions, and you might not have all the information um, that you need, but you have to trust your gut. Um, and so having that as a key um, skill set was some area that I, that I wanted to focus on. And then we talked about it earlier, um, just being open to feedback would be mm -hmm. my step. Kind of curious too. That, those are really good points, and I'm jotting, taking all these notes as you're, as you're sharing. This is all um, really, really helpful. Um, when thinking about as you were um, going back to your um, earlier career, uh, what was that transition like for you as you went from um, a contributor, somebody who was like just very, very busy doing a ton of work, and then moving more into a leadership role? where you began to have to rely on others to do some of the work. What was that transition like for you? Uh, that's, that's interesting. Um, I can give you an example. When I was on the Affinity team over at ECS, I was in charge of a couple different accounts. And um, or, organically almost, I, I moved into um, the VP role of, of the Affinity business, which is now called Partner Solutions. And so my peers, ended up being my direct reports and um, oh wow yes <laughs> <laughs> and and it was very interesting because obviously i had a relationship with my my peers but now i was their leader and i had to set different standards with them um, and and expectations with them as their leader and so i was very um upfront with them and transparent with them at the get-go, um, really kind of talking about, you know, the guiding principles of working with Claudette, um, you know, really what my expectations are um, of the team um, and of them as individuals. And so that worked very well for me because I was transparent with them. I informed them early um, and often of my expectations, and um, it worked out really well. Um, I, I feel I was very lucky. Um, I don't know if that's always the case, but that was my approach. Um, we do have a question for you, Claudette, um, from our participant chat. Great. So Sarah is asking, do you have any advice on how to find a mentor? Oh, sure. Gosh, um, a, a couple different things. Um, Experian does have a, a formal, formal mentor program. I know a couple of the different business units are also doing mentorship programs um, through Women and Experian. Um, if there is somebody that you're interested in uh, as, as a mentor for you, just based off of what you've seen in them um, personally and professionally, reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out and, and ask them if, if they can devote some time to you. I would say when you're a mentee working with a mentor, um, be prepared. Um, be, be deliberate in what you want to accomplish with that mentor. Um, so that your time together is, is quality um, and, and they're getting something out of it just as much as you are. That's really great advice, thank you. Um, but for you personally, what did you look for in a mentor and how did you know that you needed one? Oh, um, so I think I had, I think I had different uh, needs at different points in my career. 
Um, so I would say most recently, as, as um, you guys mentioned, I'm moving into a new role in April. Um, I was really looking for a mentor that could help um, provide that um, coaching around gaining visibility within the organization um, and really helping me articulate at a broader executive scale what my aspirations are um, for my career development. Um, and so I sought out a, a mentor that could help me do that um, at the executive level. And um, that, that worked very well for us. We, we got together, we talked about some areas of improvement for myself. We talked about um, how I can gain more visibility uh, by taking on special projects. And, um, and that person helped me, helped socialize my goals within that executive team. So that, that's more of a recent experience. I think in other experiences, um, it's been um, how do I take on more responsibility? How do I become a better people leader? Um, how do I um, take more responsibility in regards to like owning a, a P&L? Um, another situation was I see myself more as a generalist. So I, I, I have a knowledge of multiple things, but not a subject matter expert in one. And so part of my career journey um, moving over to CIS in the product role I'm in was to really understand um, the, the bureau products. And so I sought a, a mentor that could help me um, understand and get up to speed and, and eventually get into this role um, in CIS. I think those are really good examples of like formal mentorship programs. You also mentioned um, informal mentors, people that you reach out to from time to time. How, how does how does that look look like practically? Yeah, an, an informal mentor is is somebody that um, you know it could be a, a peer, um, and it's somebody that you trust. Um, it's somebody that you can be candid with. Um, it's somebody that helps you identify your blind spots. Um, I, I work with multiple people across different business units, and um, as CIS and DA, as an example, come together um, with more one experience solutions, I identified a mentor or, or a, a colleague, I should say, even over in DA, um, so that we can socialize ideas together and, and come together um, as one um, as we present solutions. So it it you have to look at what your what your goals are and, and potentially even what your role is and how you want to accomplish those goals and where you need to lean on others. Um, but again, I think it's important that you have that trusting relationship with somebody and, and, and your team. We do have another question from our participant. So Anne Chen is asking, what types of hard or soft skills earlier on did you find more useful versus now as you moved up in your career? That's a good one, Anne. Yeah, that is a great one. Um, I think you know some of the some of the soft skills um, early on were were definitely just communication, um, mm -hmm. and um, I think also integrity. I think it's hard sometimes um, as you're growing in your career is just really setting those strong values. Um, as I've moved up in my career, um, you know, the relationship building is, is very easy for me, you know, at this point. Um, I'm definitely um, not scared of feedback. I think that was hard, you know, early yeah. on in my career. Um, but th those are the, the areas. I would also say awareness, um, you know, just being aware um, and having empathy of, you know, your team and what's going on with your team um, and, and the business as well, you know, what are we trying to do from a business standpoint? So I would say early on, um, definitely communication, um, integrity, and then later on, um, things that I didn't need as much were, were the relationship building and, and open to feedback. Yeah, and, and I think to that, there's another good question around feedback from Michael Casey, Claudette, who's asking, you know, you mentioned too about being selective about who you seek feedback from, and Michael Casey mm -hmm. is asking, but at, who are the best people to gather feedback and insights from? Peers, managers, clients? You know, I uh, I I would say all of them. 
Um, I, and again, it depends on your role, but absolutely peers, absolutely leadership. Um, if you've got an active relationship with clients, I think it's, it's great to get that outside in perspective. Um, but I would say all of it. Um, and, and again, don't be afraid to ask for it. Okay. <laughs> you know, I think, you know what, it's, what's hard is like, Claudette, to your point about it does bruise the ego because all of us, you know, we're trying to work our hardest. We're trying yeah. to be productive. We want to have good attitudes, uh, but we all need to work on something. And I think as someone whose career, at least for me, is still young and new, I think one of the things I'm more scared of is receiving feedback most of the time. So, Claudette, um, how did you take any negative feedback you ever got or even like failures and how did you learn from them and how did you deal with them? Sure. Um, so I received feedback actually not too long ago about something and it just didn't really sit well with me. It just didn't seem right. So mm -hmm. I, I went to a couple others and I asked them um, if they uh, saw the same thing or felt the same thing, and um, they, you know, discounted the feedback that I received. But they said, you know what, let, let, us, let us ask around ourselves um, and see if we're hearing, you know, the same feedback. And so that's where I think it's important that you validate the feedback. And there mm -hmm. was feedback, but it was a little bit different um, than the way it was delivered to me, which, um, you know, really caught me off guard, and, and, I, and I was kind of upset when I first received the feedback. But mm -hmm. then doing that validation, I said, okay, um, you know, this isn't exactly the way it was delivered to me. Um, here, you know, here, here's what it truly is. And then he, you as an individual, you have to take things with a grain of salt. I mean, you have to look inside yourself and determine is this really an issue or is it not? And mm. is this something that I have to work on or not? Is this just who I am as a person? So um, that's, that's where I think the, the maturity of, you know, looking, you know, deep within yourself, doing that validation and, and making sure you, you want to do it, you want to change or, or you want to act on that feedback. Um, yeah, I think self-awareness and self-reflection is really hard for some people sometimes, and um, that's kind of a challenge. Um, Chris Hunter Salas asks, um, what are some strategies for how one can go about identifying those blind spots? Um, there's a couple different things that um, you can do within Experian. Um, you can do a 360. A review, so you can identify a couple individuals that you um, want to provide feedback um, on you from. Um, and there's, you know, a couple different books you can read. Um, there's, there's a few out there that that I've read. Um, just uh, one of them's Career Warfare. There's a couple others that just are thought provoking. Um, and, and make you think about, you know, who you are, how you operate, you know, as a, as a manager, as an employee, as a leader. Um, and, and those, to me, can be very thought-provoking. Um, I know some of my colleagues uh, utilize, you know, different podcasts or meditation. Um, but if you're looking for actual uh, hard facts, <laughs> um, I, I, I think the 360 is, is the best way um, to get feedback on yourself. Yeah, no doubt. Claudette, I recently just had a 360 <laughs> review done, and it was so funny when, um, when before they, they, they passed them out, there was like a big like five-minute talk about before you get these results, <laughs> take a deep breath. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, the 360 like will reveal things that you never thought about. Or, uh, and also the way that what's interesting about those types of tests is, is that you find out how you're viewed by your peers versus leaders versus right. clients, right? And, and you don't really think about dividing those perceptions up, but it's actually really informative when you do that. It is. And, and I'll, uh, I'll share something else with you all. Um, one time I, I had a 360 done and Lori Bober from HR was um, reviewing the results with, with a few of us. 
And I, you know, I read through, I read through everything. I, you know, I'd made my notes and I had kind of put together in my own, you know, head my plan on how I was going to, uh, you know, address certain areas. And um, when Lori and I met, you know, we started talking about it. She goes, Claudette, she's like, look at all the good stuff. She's like, look at all the good stuff. Yeah. Don't concentrate on the negative. Let's start with all the good stuff. And so that was that was a lesson for me. Hmm. No, because I, I, that's where our mind gravitates. We're like, okay, yeah. Where's all the negativity? I gotta, you know, this is all stuff I gotta work on. It, it's right. very eye opening. Yeah, but that's really good. Um, the 360 document, and I guess all those things, Claudette, what you're talking about is really self awareness. It is. It is, and. Um, I think uh, self-awareness is is harder, I think, when you're early in your career. I think based off of experiences, um, different roles that you play in, um, it becomes more prevalent. And I would also say that, as I mentioned earlier, like feedback is a gift. And, and feedback could be, you know, hey, Claudette, you did a great job at this. Or, hey, Claudette, for the next meeting, we should probably focus on this a little bit more. So um, when you're seeking feedback, seek any type of feedback, um, and, and when you're asking for it, say that. Say, I'm looking for the good and the areas that I can improve upon. Um, because sometimes when, when people are giving feedback, they actually start with the negative. So, so make sure that you're very clear on what type of feedback you want. That's really good. That's really good. Um, we got a question here about uh, from Sarah who's asking, Claudette, when you think of some of the best employees who have worked for you or alongside you, what are some of the big qualities that makes them stand out? Wow, I've been so fortunate um, to have really good employees and um, really good peers. Um, for me, it's drive and ambition. Um, I, I set very high um, expectations of my team and um, they, they know that. Um, I'm very transparent with them. And um, they, they believe in it. They believe in what we're trying to accomplish. And so I, I set up actually key competencies for different levels within my organization, um, whether you're a product manager or a director or senior director or trying to become, to a, become a VP. Um, and, and some of those key competencies are, you know, dealing with ambiguity, um, driving for results, um, being a great people leader, looking for, you know, innovative ideas. Um, so all of those things are um, really what I value in, in my employees um, and in my peers. But most importantly, I think it's doing the right thing and, and how, as an organization, can we accomplish our goals um, by doing the right thing? Um, again, you know, with integrity and, and um, you know, building out a high-performance team where everyone's um, marching down the same path to that goal. So um, those, are, those are just some of the key competencies that I look for in, in my team. And I, like I said, I've been so fortunate here at Experian, not only with my own employees in the different divisions, but, but also the peers that I've been working with. Mm -hmm. uh, what has been your process? I mean, you're now moving into a new role, and you've actually transitioned a lot. When I, looked at you, when I look at LinkedIn and see your different moves within Experian, it seems like you are doing something new every year or two, working on some new projects, uh, working in new divisions. How do you handle these different transitions? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't move new positions every year, so <laughs> no, no. <laughs> let's, let's make that clear, Mike. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yes, I started at ECS. Um, I was at ECS for several years, been in my CIS role uh, for about three and a half years. I did actually have an opportunity to go overseas this last summer and do a succumbent um, in Australia, and basically what that meant was they pulled me out of my existing job, put me in our Sydney, Australia office for two months to really help um, reboot the business down there from a, a product and a strategy perspective, um, and then I got to come back um, to my existing role, um, and, and now um, over to EMS come April. 
So for me, um, I've always set goals for myself, um, and I'm one of those that has to exceed my goal, and if I don't exceed it, I better come pretty darn close to meeting it. And one of the goals for me and the story I've been telling, you know, to my leadership team for the last several years is at some point I would like to be a, a BU president of a business. And so I've mapped out what it's going to take for me to get there. Um, and part of that is having a broad understanding of experience. And so moving from ECS to CIS was really um, getting a broad understanding of the credit business um, and also a product role. And then moving over to EMS, um, it's going to be a, a accumulation of, of all the roles that I've had in my career. Um, so I'll have several different functions underneath me, um, which again, you know, is, is the path that I'm personally taking um, to get to that BU president role at some point. And I think it's really important to note that the movement's not always up. The movement is lateral at times. Um, I was a VP at ECS before I came over to CIS. Um, and, um, you know, so I've been a VP for several years. And, um, it's, it's not, again, the title, and it's not the, the upward uh, mobility necessarily. It's, it's the learning. And so for mm. me, what keeps me energized is, is the consistent learning. Great. I think we have one last question, Claudette. Um, Linda Tan was asking, what is something you wish you knew or learned early in your career? Hmm. You know, I, I think for me, I, I wish and I knew and learned early in my career um, a better way to network. I was pretty siloed in my in my networking, and um, really experience taught me how how to network more broadly. Um, and my advice would be, if you are setting up a, a network meeting with somebody, ask them at the end of your meeting, who else should I be talking to? Who else do you recommend that I meet? Because that will just broaden your list of others to network with. And as I noted before, make sure that when you do set up that networking meeting, that you are getting the most value out of it and you're providing value to that, that person. So, so make sure that you come prepared um, with, you know, things that, that you're trying to accomplish by networking. But that, I would say that was, was something that I, I wish I was better at early on in my career. And, and I just love the fact that you, that was something that you worked on and you continually work on by having intentional goals to meet with, you know, two to four people every single month. So that, that's something that is awesome that you continue to work on. So. It's very, very cool. Well, Claudette, thank you so much for your time today, for sharing Absolutely. your insights on leadership. Um, there's so many questions coming in, and you have just provided so many great insights. Um, I definitely want to get like a transcription of today. <laughs> there's so much valuable information. Um, I want to let everybody know that this is a monthly leadership summit. We have them planned uh, for the entire year. Uh, on, in February, we're going to be talking with ALPA. If you'd like to learn more about that session, it'll be on February 15th at 11.30. The short URL is just ex.pn, A-L-P-A-J-I-J-A-I-N. And then in March, we're talking with Adam Fingerish. On March 4th, the short URL is just ex.pn slash F-I-N-G-E-R-S-H. And we've got a bunch of other leaders gonna be talking with us uh, throughout the year. So please feel free to join us. Um, also, we are looking for your suggestions for topics for other guests later on. So if you have any uh, requests, please let us know. The, the email address you can reach out, to, reach out to us is just lead at experian.com. Thanks to everyone for joining us today, and we hope you all have a great week. Take care. Thanks, Claudette. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Mike. Bye.